so here I am. Uh, real name is Brandon, by the way, and channel name obviously is Kylink. What you probably don't know about is the way that I used to draw when I was younger and how I got to these drawings. Um, so I'm just showing some of my better drawings here. Um, I think Brandon Sark is probably my best one, almost, except that I didn't know how to use charcoal at the time, so I really would have liked if I had gotten more contrast in this. But the details on the fur were pretty cool to be able to achieve, and that was by far the longest I've ever spent on a drawing. I used to draw very abstract drawings, and a lot of it's going to look actually really bad. Um, so I used to be into this really scribble style of art, and I guess I was just kind of losing my mind at the time, if I'm being completely honest. Just scribbling and drawing purely from feeling, no technique at all. But I used to draw things that were more abstract, and I really liked this one because I used a lot of color. Um, and it's kind of faded now because it's been 15 years, maybe 16 years since I drew this. You've seen all the portrait drawings, and I, I really like doing those, and I learned a lot about realism. But I've never applied that style of realism to my surreal drawings. And what I'm really interested in is abstract, mostly surreal. Very, very surreal. Abstract is okay. I almost feel like it's a little too random for me. Like you could draw a line on a giant page and that would be considered to be abstract. So I'd like to say I really like surreal art more. And um, the realism that I took into my portrait drawings is something I'd really like to use to now elevate my surreal interests. So over the next couple of months, I'm working really hard on some projects. Um, I'm, built, I'm doing this series where I built a new computer, and then I have another huge project that I'm putting a lot of time and effort into, where I'm building a setup. It's a desk surrounded by two cabinets. I used to draw a lot of darker stuff too. I was pretty into, I guess, extreme uh, metal. And yeah, so I was really obsessed with just dark stuff. I had long black hair. I'm balding now, so I can't have long black hair anymore. <sighs> I'd really like to take the realism that I know about now and plug those skills into these more abstract, strange things that I used to draw. This is like just kind of a conglomeration of like flesh and plants life, I guess, hung up by like hair. If you could imagine seeing something like that, oh here. If you could imagine seeing something like that, like maybe growing in a, sh a sewer or something. Remember we used to explore the sewers and I remember seeing this crazy like fungus creature that just had long hairs growing off of it. It kind of gave me the idea for this, these weird life forms that are just like biology like jammed together, but kind of humanoid too. If you can see kind of there's eyes here sort of in a way and feet and there's kind of like a nose mouth kind of hybrid. But yeah, so I used to really like grotesque. I don't know how much I'll bring that type of thing back into um, newer art that I think. But I do want to do a lot more stuff like this and make it a lot nicer. And so when I'm done building my new setup, like I said, I'm putting a lot of time into it and I want to make those episodes last for a decent amount of time, like maybe a couple of months where you're seeing the process of me building a new space where I will be creating all of my art and also all of my music. I'm equally passionate about music, if not more, depending on the day, really. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of high quality um, that I want to like put into the future of the channel. I want to bump things up to a higher quality is what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, some of my influences are obviously Salvador Dali, but more recently Jono Dry on YouTube is someone who I aspire to be able to to draw like. The level that he draws on is huge and extremely detailed, so I don't know about the amount of time that he's putting into his art. I, I'm sure I'll do some pieces like that. Anyways, I want you to look forward to all this stuff. I'll show you a couple more pieces. And I want to take you into my first portrait drawings ever. So that was my earliest sketchbook, and this is the next one over. Um, this was starting in a strange period of time in my life. It was after high school and I was still drawing abstract and looking at it now I feel better about these drawings than I do about the ones in the older sketchbook 
But when I was drawing these, I was feeling a lot less passionate. So it's kind of interesting how the result, I feel like, is still an improvement in a way. It's always subjective, so maybe you like the first sketchbook better, so <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. Let's say AI gets a body, okay guys? And then it starts printing just like structures and materials across our landscapes. Anyway, this is like a future sort of, I don't know, maybe technology mixed with some sort of organic looking shapes in a way. Um, just kind of like, I like combining all sorts of vibes basically. Um, futuristic, organic, just making conglomerations. I feel like conglomeration is a good word to describe a lot of what I try to put onto the page when I'm drawing art. Um, this one was really fun. It's kind of got sort of like a spatial feel. It's very like open, like spacious, but um, again, conglomeration of smaller kind of, I guess, artifacts. I don't know why that's the word. I'm using but just things compressed and then open up into space and this kind of ribbon that's coming out interdimensionally, maybe. Speaking of interdimensional things, oh, here's something where you could imagine uh, a psychic um, alien. Perfect transition, because I was going to say, speaking of interdimensional things, I don't know if you guys have been following the UFO conferences or whatever. Um, the square, the giant red square that was apparently approaching a naval base, when they talked about that, he used the word square, and I thought that he misspoke because I thought they were seeing cubes. But no, he, he corrected someone on Twitter, uh, Lieutenant Graves, and it was a square. So interdimensional shapes entering our space is what they're claiming to be um, the existing ships that they're encountering today. Yeah, I thought I'd throw some color into this. Um, so again, like interdimensional, things that couldn't exist in real space, at least as we know it, maybe with these squares uh, popping in, maybe things like this can exist somewhere, but so folding in um, different pieces of space and just um, accumulation of smaller compact artifacts like being shoved together and then spreading out. And then I like to do this little trace of the alien head on the other side here. Sometimes I like to trace what I drew and then change it a little bit. So here I went back into some of the scribbling type of thing. I'm going to skip over some stuff. Um, I just want to show you where I started, um, what it was like, and then how I progress it into the portraits that I draw now. This one's really strange and weird feeling to me. Um, I'll leave it to you to kind of figure out what maybe I'm depicting or whatever, but just not a good feeling to be honest. Um, but art is always a way to express whatever it is, so. so keep on going here. I'm gonna skip as much as I can because I want to get to the portraits, so. <laughs> That's not one of them, this is not, I mean, you could consider this to be an early portrait, sure, but I'm not drawing looking at an image and trying to recreate it, I'm just, you know, stoned. I don't know what I was doing there, really. Um, <clears throat> balloon floating down, communication. This is kind of like I see as a phone and just, just trying to communicate. Maybe that's me, I don't know. Difficult to communicate sometimes, so. shaky whistle. <clears throat> so here's when I started to first draw, and it wasn't a portrait, but this is the first time in years that I had decided I wanted to look at an image um, and try to recreate the image that I was looking at. Um, so I was watching Batman Returns. Um, it's one of my favorite, I think it's my favorite Batman movie. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, so Leave your favorite Batman movie in the comments, sure, do that. Uh, but this was my first attempt at just kind of drawing something and looking at it and then trying my best to just recreate it on the page. Um, so I did a couple of different drawings from that movie. And this is my first ever portrait. Now I had just gotten into video game collecting, um, 
which I was using as a tool to replace my addiction to getting high, uh, which I was just smoking weed. Um, and for me, that was very detrimental. I, I just get paranoid. So I know a lot of people love it. No hate on those people. Weed can be great and I miss it. I wish I could still enjoy it, but it sort of messed me up. So I started collecting retro games and, and this guy has a retro gaming uh, YouTube channel. His name is Metal Jesus and this is my first portrait. So make of that what you will. But as you can see, like it didn't start in the place where I ended up at all. Um, like I, I progressed over the course of about six months, I would say to sort of this point where I was drawing without a grid and making things pretty realistic. Um, for my standard, is a big improvement on where I started. So I just wanted to put this out there because when you start drawing, you start drawing portraits or whatever you want to be drawing, you're not gonna get it perfect the first try and there's always room to improve. So even if you, you feel like you just you're just like, oh man, I suck. Like people who do this have a skill and I don't have that skill. Well, you, I, I think you really can develop it. I think you can get there for sure. So just keep trying and just keep uh, discovering new techniques and watch tutorial videos um, and you'll pick up things that will help you over time. I also want to put it out there that when I draw a portrait, when, when you reach that point and you're, you're drawing something and you don't think it's going to turn out, just push past that. I promise you, when I draw things, even my best drawings, there's always like a long period of time, like I said, sometimes six to even 10 hours where I think it's not gonna turn out and I'm looking at it, I'm going, this is not very good. That happens even when the drawing does turn out well. So just push past, the, past those points and then just try to apply the techniques that you learn. Um, so <laughs> what's funny about this one, what's funny about this drawing is I, so this is Aquaman. <clears throat> and I posted this on, on uh, Instagram <clears throat> and my friend responded to it and he's like, is that Aquaman? <laughs> and I was like, look, if I draw Aquaman, it's going to look more like Aquaman than this. Okay. So I took that challenge. I took it as a challenge and I decided to draw Aquaman and I posted this on Instagram and it really pushed me to, to try to reach another level. And for me, this was the best I had ever done at the time. So sorry, my shadows being on everything. Um, yeah, so that, that was my, this is my Aquaman and that's why I drew him. And then here's my, my favorite drawing from uh, Batman Returns. It's obviously it's the penguin. He's pouring out his ooze in the sewers. Um, and I spent a lot of time on this one. I was very, very proud of it at the time. And I still am, so. Uh, this is one of my favorite drawings I've made even today. I should maybe recreate this with charcoal, but I like the, the contrast that I put even with um, graphite, just pencil. And then I like that it has just the one color and I like what color it is that I think that's a cool green. And I think it just captures the vibe of the film very well. It's very creepy. It's just, uh, I really like this drawing. What some people will do is they will draw sort of an approximation first, and then they will slowly bring the details into view. Um, and that's totally an acceptable way to do it too. Now for me, I find that when I, when I draw that way, I can end up getting the proportions off. So if I approximate the size of the head and then where the nose might, the eyes might be, and then I start adding details, and then later I might find that, well, actually I kind of put like a significant portion of the face in the wrong place. So I like to just start from points that are very, very close to each other and then add those details in and then keep my reference points very close together. And then the more reference points is points that <laughs> the more reference points is, wow. The more reference points that you create as you're, branching out, the more that you're going to have to go on when you start getting into the larger curves and details. Um, and just always be looking at where things are relative to each other. Like I would have been looking at where this point is and how it comes across. And it's kind of somewhere almost halfway between this point and this point. 
but it seems to be a little bit higher than halfway. So I'd be keeping all those things in mind as I'm drawing and um, not letting any of them slide to the best of my perception. So that's how I would start drawing. But what I ended up doing eventually was I would bring in more techniques. I started to learn how to use charcoal and there's lots of great tutorials how to do that. Um, this was a really fun one. I liked the way the shadow foreshadows, um, no pun intended, um, the cat woman mask that Michelle Pfeiffer would eventually be wearing in the movie. I really liked this picture. And when I watched the movie through, I paused it at different points that I thought were a good freeze frame to draw. Um, so I found this, this frame in the movie and I thought it was just a great, great one to draw. So I, maybe I should do this in greater detail later. Um, this is one of my, f the drawings I did from Batman Returns are some of my favorite I've ever done. This is my cousin Devin. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, he's a gentleman, traveling the world, a legend, a huge inspiration for me. And we got Morpheus. This was another one that I was really proud of when I made it. So um, lots of shading and cool reflections in the glasses. Um, I think I've opened up to this page a, a lot of times and it maybe is a little bit faded from how it was when I first drew it. Again, this would be another one that would be great to do in charcoal. But yeah, so in general, I just wanted to show you guys my progression, where I started. Uh, and then the f these are the first portraits that I drew in order. So um, now you've kind of seen where I started and you've seen where I've ended up. And I also wanted to give you that idea of where I'm going. So I hope you're looking forward to the next few series that are gonna be coming out over the next couple of months. I'm putting a lot of work into editing the videos to try to just make them entertaining um, and try to improve my video editing skills. But uh, when all of that's ready, I hope you're excited for more art content and for me to sharpen my skills and apply them in different ways that we haven't seen yet. So, uh, Anyways, that's it. I've talked for a long time, and uh, I will leave you with the um, guy from Kung Pao. What's his name? Oh, that's, that's so embarrassing. <clears throat> Master Tang, Master Tang. I was gonna look it up and I remembered. I'll leave you with Master Tang. If you haven't seen Kung Pao, give it a watch. It's uh, one of the best movies of all time. So, goodbye. Take care and take your pencil and your charcoal and your tools and give it a try and don't stop even if you're not sure how it's gonna turn out. Just keep pushing.